I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left, no reason, no conscience, no understanding, even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. On today's spooktacular review, we're going to be having a look at the new released Mezgo Toys 112 Collective. This is Halloween's Michael Myers. get a closer look at Michael Myers. Let's figure out how tall the figure stands right to the top of his head. Here we go. Right, right there. The figure stands 6.7 inches in height or in centimeters, you're looking at 17 centimeters exactly. Just before we have a look at Michael Myers accessories, I guess we'll look at the display base that comes included with him first. A very shiny black display base, so much so I have to kind of keep it tilted so that you don't see all the light reflecting off of it. What's nice though is that they've recreated the movie, the original 78 movie poster. Always have been a big fan of that movie poster, how it transitions from the jack-o'-lantern to the knife. Did you know that? Transitions. And then of course you've got Halloween written across the top couple of different ways that you can display Michael. Primarily, there's a little peg post at the top there in which you can take the figure and he has two peggles on the undersides of his feet. Simply just attach him to the peg. This is pretty much primary walkthroughs that we're doing right now. And you can display him on the, on the display base like this. Now, Mezco also includes this adjustable neck. This would work perfectly fine for superhero themed figures in which you're going to have them leaping up or lunging, if you will, in midair. But it doesn't really make much sense for Michael. Personally speaking, of course. Um, the way to display him using that is that you have to take the post and you have to pop it through. Um, it helps also if you pop it through the right way. So I find the easiest thing to do is just take the end, the knob of the neck, and just push it through from the underneath, and then you just pop the peg through. Just pull that back out, make sure of course you don't lose it, and then that just attaches to the top like so. It sticks too far really out for it to look accurate or even look like it makes any sense with Michael. I mean, you can kind of angle this back, bring this forward like that, and then you can attach it sort of around his waist, but it just, like I said, it doesn't make any sense specifically for this figure. Essentially, you're just going to have all this extra baggage of an adjustable neck behind him. So for me, personally speaking, 
I would not ever display him using this. I appreciate for the fact that they sort of across the board use the exact same supplied tools for the collectors to display the figures. But for Michael, I think a peg is perfectly fine. For the rest of his accessories, let me draw your attention also to the 112 bag. Just comes included with the figure, so if you have all these extra accessories and you don't want to have to put them back in the box, you got yourself a little baggie that you can store them with instead. And this comes included. This is staple inclusion to come included with all the Mezco 112 figures. Then we can look at some of the more notable accessories, and that one being the Judith Myers tombstone. Beloved daughter, born November 10th, 1947, died October 31st, 1963. It is actually a lot heavier than I thought it would be. It's not metal, as best as I can think. It's it's not also either like a resin, but it, it feels like it's a heavier plastic. It's got weight to it, and it also helps to support the tombstone and uh, preventing it from falling over. It does have some nice sort of faux granite look to it. You can even see that it's got a little bit of chipping away down at the bottom there as well, and some little chick chips and uh, little cracks and stuff like that there on the top and on the side. It looks like it's been airbrushed around the side here, around the outer area, just to give it a little bit more of a darker color, a little bit lighter on the interior, and all the lettering and stuff is etched into it. There's the back of it. So it looks good. I like that. This is pretty neat. They also include the original pumpkin. The pumpkin, I should express further, the pumpkin at the beginning of the movie uh, for the credits. And it does seem like it's a little more squished. I feel like it could be a little bit higher than it is wider, but it does have the notable details to it, like the slit that connects the mouth portion to the triangular nose in the middle. And there's the back of it. What's neat though about it is you can take the lid off. It does come with two batteries, two button cell batteries, which have to be installed. I've already installed them and just omitted the screw. And then you, there's a little switch on the top and you switch it on. Let's complete the look by adding the top lid of the pumpkin. There we go. There's only one way that you can put it in. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the gap or notch at the back is a little wider than it is on the front. So when you are putting it in, it can only go one way. It just lines up like that. This is the first company I've seen that have released a light up pumpkin for Michael Myers. Now, before you say, well, NECA also released one as well, but NECA's involved you pushing the top to project the light. As long as you push the top stem, the light will continue to project. Uh, if you can see it as well, that the pumpkin is flickering, which is a nice touch. This is nothing new to Mezco. I mean, you can easily go to any craft store and get a tea light that flickers in the same similar way. But it's neat that they would have put that inside a pumpkin like this. Let's just go ahead and switch that off so we just don't drain the batteries. And we'll put that back on. A nice addition, though, is the is the included pumpkin. We'll put that right there. Michael also comes with a pair of knives. Normally, he would only be wielding one of them, but they give you the option of having a clean or bloodied knife, your personal preference. I kind of lean more towards the clean knife myself, but if you are somebody who has you know, murderous tendencies. You can display him with the bloody knife if you so wish. Now, unfortunately, getting him into his hand is impossible. Before you riddle the comments with down below about it's impossible, how could you know, he should come with hands? Well, let me just explain getting him out of packaging. He does come with closed fists. These are extremely boring and immediately will be replaced out. I just want to show you that immediately getting them out of packaging though, that the figure only has closed fists. Don't worry, don't fear. Mesco gives you a whole bunch of extra hands as well. They give you a pair of holding hands, not to hold other people's hands, but to hold knives. And he comes with one for both sides, depending on which knife you, which hand you want to have Michael wielding his knife. Then he also comes with a pair of relaxed hands, or slightly lunging hands, if you will. And then I guess this would be, there you go. There's the mirror copy of that hand. And then he does also have like these hands here. So what I would do myself, it's only me, 
when I would be displaying the figure, I'd likely be having him holding, let's just grab the right hand, holding the knife with this hand. And of course, for Michael, I would display the hand, the knife upside down, just my, just my preference. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab one of the grabbing hands or the fanned out hands, if you'd like to describe it best that way. And this is gonna be how I'm likely displaying Michael, just with like the slightly more relaxed hands. We don't need to give him a clenched fist. And then the other hand holding the knife. Looks good. So let's go ahead and move these accessories out of the way. He comes with one other, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's first have a look at Michael Myers. Actually, I'm just gonna move the tombstone out of the way move the pumpkin out of the way, in case the camera wants to focus on the stuff behind me and not on the stuff on the forefront. That is Michael Myers. Okay, so this figure is pretty good, I have to admit. I'm not normally on board when it comes to Mezco 112 figures. I really haven't collected all, many, but there are certain notable characters that I've picked up. Michael Myers definitely wanted to be, or for me, definitely was gonna be one that I was gonna pick up. And immediately getting them out of package, I'm pretty happy with the figure. There are a few little things where I'm scratching my head. I'm thinking, why, why would they have done that? But uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm happier more so than I am disappointed. Let's have a look first at his face. Now, they've taken some luxuries for, for this particular figure. Some things I probably would have done differently, for example, is... I probably would not have darkened the eyebrows as much as as much as they have here. Michael Myers generally I would think more of a paler eyebrow than a dark brown eyebrow. Sort of does draw your attention to it. Um, some of the more subtle details such as the sideburn. I guess there is a one little marking there on the side in which the sideburn has been removed because of course this being no spoilers but a former Captain Kirk mask. Um, the, cheekbone, the cheekbones aren't the most defined, um, the sides of his face, that is. I feel like this figure, as good as the head sculpt may be, leaves a little bit where paint could have also enriched and improved the sculpt on him. It's, it's almost a little too clean. Adding a little bit of shading on the side, adding a little bit of shade right around this area of the around the sides of the nose, I think would have even added further detailing to this mask. Like I said, it's a little too smooth. It's a little too clean. It's still a good mask, though. It reminds me a lot like the McFarlane movie Maniac's Michael Myers mask. Although that one is a much cruder looking comparison, but I do feel like that one looks a little bit cl closer to this one right here. Like I said, just a little bit of paint could have gone a long way on this figure. I also would have darkened the areas in on the inside of the mask so that the eyes weren't as noticeable. I think they do stand out a little bit more than what I would have preferred. The hair sculpt is good, although I do feel it's a little on the medium shade of brown. I could have maybe darkened that a little bit. Now that may sound like I'm being overly critical, and perhaps I am, but I feel like if this is for a figure that's going to be defining Michael Myers, I probably there was there would be things I would change to it primarily is just like like I said the paint I would have darkened areas that just it seems to me like the problem with this face sculpt is not the sculpt but I feel like there's not enough um, there's not enough uh, color variations between the darker and the lighter shades it's sort of just like one color of paint running across it so it like even when you tilt it to certain angles Light is just sort of hitting it in the same way from this side to this side. There's no recessed areas. There's no darker areas. Paint certainly could have gone a long way. And I would have probably pulled back a little bit on how dark they would have darkened those eyebrows. Again, for this being Mezco's first efforts into a Michael Myers, at least from a 112 standpoint, it's generally pretty good. He has his boiler on, a blue boiler. The coloring is decent enough. It does, from certain lighting, hit it, and it does feel, it does look like it's a little bit more navy than what it should be. Let me just pick a hair that's off the back of his torso here. Proportionally, he doesn't look too puffy. He doesn't look too swollen. Like his torso seems like it's a good sufficient, like there's no additional padding or anything like that in there. The boiler, I could have made it a little bit darker. 
but I mean, I'm not gonna certainly go from head to toe picking apart this. It's just because I'm such a big Michael Myers fan that I do find that there's some things about this figure that I would, I would admittingly change. Uh, the contrast, like I said, in the mask is probably my biggest one. The boiler color, I think it's close enough. I'm not gonna, I don't think it necessarily needs darkening, but I think the contrast of color, some darker shades could have been added a little bit more to the mask. Let's talk a little bit about his boots. Now, the movie plays relatively dark, at least scenes in which it has Michael Myers in it. I would have to definitely go back and double check the coloring of his boots. I never thought I would ever have to go back and double check the coloring of Michael's boots, but according to Mezco here, it's got these green sides to his shoes. I don't think that's correct. Um, in fact, the boot is actually a lot higher than I thought as well. This color doesn't does work well, but I don't know why they would have given it this olive green on the sides. I mean, it's like the start seeing it. When I got it out of the packaging, I didn't even expect to see it right away. And now that's the only thing I'm looking at. So I probably, not crazy, like I said, on this, this dark green, this olive military green almost that they, these look like military boots than they do something that Michael would have wore. And uh, there's the under treads, two peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Treads are sculpted pretty good. So there's Michael Myers. Now let's talk about one of the things that you can do with Michael, and that is the swappable head. So this is pretty cool. They give you Bob's sheet, or at least the head portion of Bob's sheet. If you look closely, you can make out that there are eyes inside the eye holes of the sheet. Now, to change out Michael's head, you have to actually take his head off and replace it with this one right here. If I flip it up, let me just show you what it looks like on the interior. Now, you've got the head here, and it's attached to a neck, which means you're going to have to take everything off of Michael. I'll show you that. But then it's this, it's almost like this clear overlay this is the part that sits over top of his shoulders. Even in the instructions, they tell you that when you are putting it over top of Michael, you sort of want to hold it from the side. Everything else here is just loose sheets. Hold it from the side when you are putting it down on him. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then I'll talk a little bit about things that bother me a bit about the Bob sheet. Here we go. More problems about what you, <laughs> what you think of the figure. So what I need to do is I need to take this off completely. That also comes included with the neck. And you just sort of want to flip it over, fan it out as much as you can. And you can always fix it later if you want. You can tip the figure upside down or you can tilt the sheet back. I find it's easier to tilt the figure upside down and just sort of pop the ball joint into the neck. This does seems easy on paper, but it is actually trickier to do more than what you think you would, more trickier than what you think it may be. And then from there, you just sort of adjust the sheet accordingly. Now, the problem with the sheet, though, is this is all loose fabric. The area that I just showed you is a clear plastic. The problem is it discolors the coloring of the sheet. This looks like a softer white. Here, it sort of looks like there's glue that's been applied to it. And it's just because this fabric has been glued to the under clear shell that goes over top of Michael's shoulders. You can sort of see what's been adhered and then what is just free flowing. It doesn't flow the greatest of ways. There are certain places where it looks like it's stuck to itself, that it doesn't feel like it flows as well as it should. But I, I appreciate at the very least that Mezco would give you the option of swapping out Michael's head and giving you a bob sheet. And I guess this is the, the easiest workaround to it, shy of giving you a brand new figure. The only other Mezco, or the only other Michael that we've gotten with a bob sheet is of course the NECA Toys release that also came with bob sheet, but it was just all plastic. Here at least you're getting real fabric, but I don't feel like it executes as well up here. It's just stuck down. It's slightly a dar darker shade than the rest of the coloring of the sheet. I mean, at the very least, you still have Michael's eyes, eyes peering through. You've got the glasses, which you gotta be a little bit more careful of that they don't come loose here. I mean, it it's a passable, at the very least, it's a passable option. 
I do want to just say like, just because I'm nitpicking this doesn't mean I'm not happy that Mezco would release it, but I just don't think that this works as well as they had hoped. I don't really even know what I would have done differently to it. Maybe I would have only glued this part right here and leave the rest down, be down below as a little looser. It only really needs to be about there that it's glued. And I would have freed this up a little bit more than what I did, what, what they would have done. I mean, you could probably pull this just a little bit out from it. I mean, it just seems like it's glued in place. Let me just flip it up to show you. Yeah, it's just glued right at the bottom here. You could peel it back a little bit just to free this up. It's too con it's too limited here. It's too restricted here. Just I would pull this up, and I might just ultimately do that. I just pull this up a little bit away from the plastic because it it's it's way too glued down here. Anyways, we'll go ahead and pop Bob's sheet off. We'll just put it to the side. And we'll replace it back to the way I'm going to display the figure anyways with Michael's head. So there in a nutshell is Michael Myers. We can, of course, go through his posability together, being that this is a 112 collective. They are actually pretty posable figures. So we'll go ahead and talk about his posability. So his head rotates all the way around. You probably already saw when I took his head off how the ball joint works. There's a dumbbell ball joint. So there's one there and there's one there. So you got the ball joint happening here. Let me just see if I can rotate it, kind of like a joystick. And then you've got the secondary ball joint attaching to his head, and then that can move as well. I might actually just bring the collar up a little bit on Michael too, kind of just like that. When I looked at the figure and I got him out of packaging, I did think that the head was a little too big for his body. I sort of still feel that same way, but I've warmed up to the fact that his head maybe isn't as big as I thought it would be. Could it be a little bit smaller? I guess proportionally to his shoulders, yes, but it's not as big as I and as I felt when I first got him out of the box. Um, as for shoulders, they hinge out, and they hinge out. Let's just see here. There we go. Shoulders are a little on the tight side, at least for this for my figure here. They come out to about there, and you can also rotate them all the way around. But of course, this being fabric, it's going to get a little on the tight side for you does have a bend at the elbow and the arms rotate and the hands rotate and he has an upper torso crunch and he's got a waist swivel and then we get to his legs his legs fan out you can move him forward you can move him back he has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh right there double hinge on the knee and then we get to the feet the feet are separate right here see the top part of the boot the the bottom of the boot is actually separate from that so you can rotate up here and then you can rotate down here again I'd have to go back I'm certain that he doesn't wear boots this color but to be fair I've only ever really paid attention to this part of Michael I've never really paid too much attention to his feet it's so low you know it's so low lit when you see him walking that it's really hard to make out his footwear, but I don't feel like the coloring is accurate though to his boots. Now, if they are actually that color, I'm, I'm incorrect, but it does seem like those aren't the correct coloring to his footwear. Michael Myers, I do like his accessories. I do like the fact that he's a fully posable figure. And for the most part, I do like his head sculpt. There's not many shortcomings to this figure. And overall, I think it's a pretty successful 112 collective release. Now, do you feel like I've been overly critical when it comes to this Michael Myers release from Mezco Toys? I admit I might have nitpicked him a little bit more than what it was warranted, but my takeaway from this is I do like the figure quite a bit. Uh, getting a Michael Myers, for example, in cloth outfits is something that we never really get, and looking at him now, I kind of wish we could have gotten this guy in a 12-inch variety, maybe with some better detailing to his face. That's the part that I was thinking I was being a little bit too critical about, but I think the head sculpt is good. The mask is decent enough on this figure, but paint some adding some darker contrast colors could have probably resonated a little bit more and brought some of the sculpts in his cheekbones and the recessed areas of his eyes a little bit more to the forefront he sort of is just one color and i think that is the one thing that takes away a little bit from the sculpt that mezco put into him is the fact that he is just one color of white paint he needed some darker tones there as well and that 
if anything can be taken from this review, is the one thing that I wish they could have changed differently to him. The rest of the figure I like. Giving him the boilers in a fabric is a nice touch versus the alternate plastic that we've normally gotten from Michael Myers figures. So I like the fact that he's got a cloth outfit. The boiler color probably could have also shared a slightly darker approach, but not to the extent that I think the mask could have been tweaked. And let's talk a little bit about those shoes. What's the deal with those shoes? I'm going to have to go back and double check some of those stills from the movie. Maybe Michael did wear olive colored boots. I don't think he did though. Be curious as to why they gave him those, but I could be wrong and somebody could very well send me an image of Michael Myers and say, see, there he is. There he is right there. He's wearing olive colored boots. Okay, he wore olive colored boots. For the rest of the figure, his accessories are all the things that he should come included with. The tombstone is nice, weighted and heavy. The jack-o'-lantern lights up, which is something that even NECA back in the day wasn't doing. So I like the fact that they would have given a light-up pumpkin, a light-up jack-o'-lantern. And of course, there's Bob Sheet. Bob Sheet, for the most part, is applied fairly easy. Fabric is incorporated to it, so that's a nice touch. But it's a little too glued down for my liking, at least around the head portion. It does cause the sheet to look a little bit darker around the area of the head. And where the cutoff is at the very bottom of that plastic undershell is you can sort of see where the glued area of the sheet starts or stops and then the rest of the free-flowing fabric begins. Maybe I could pull away a little bit at the bottom of that to fix that problem, but it's never really going to be what I'm going to display the figure with anyways. I'm going to display him exactly how you're seeing right now. Well done, Mezco. I know over the course of this review it may have sounded like I was being overly critical for the figure and I do apologize. I like this figure quite a bit. I just think it could have afforded a little bit of extra paint. I know, I know I'm beating a dead horse. Either way though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the 112 Collective Michael Myers from Halloween is currently available in comic book stores. In today's spooktacular review, this is a figure that I of course wanted to have a look at during the, the month of Spottober. Today we were looking at the Mezco Toys 112 Collective. This was the Halloween 78 Michael Myers. And maybe, hopefully not the end of Michael Myers from the 112 perspective. If you guys wanted to subscribe to this channel and haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button that's just below this video. And certainly stay tuned, because over the month of Spotober, it's not over yet. We still got, I guess, about a week or so. There's going to be a whole bunch of spooky videos still coming to this channel. So keep your eyes peeled. That's so gross. I always say it's so gross, and yet I continue to say that. Either way, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.